them and they participating in it's better to sung team amen um now also today um I would like to speak about a saint on the new calendar from this past Wednesday, and that is Saint Damien of Molokai. Uh, he was a Belgian priest. His name was uh, Joseph de Wester, and he was born in 1840. And as we know, there, there was a, a leper colony in, on Hawaii, and uh, he was sent, um, uh, uh, he volunteered to go there, essentially. He volunteered to go to a leper colony, and, and the Hawaiian government had basically, it was an outbreak of leprosy, and the Hawaiian government had put everybody was like forcible quarantine, and uh, this was this was terrible. It we ended up being a penal colony. Once you went in, you couldn't come out. Uh, and so Saint Damien of Molokai volunteered to go there, essentially uh, volunteering to be a martyr, knowing that you know he was he was um, likely going to contract leprosy and die, which in fact he did. Uh, but you know, of course, he didn't start out that way. He he's joined. Um, he was in a religious order as a uh, um, um, just a, a brother, and he was he was uh, considered at the beginning um, uh, not really brilliant. I mean, not stupid, but kind of ignorant. You know, so he was from a peasant family. He had an older brother in the order, um, uh, and this is back in the time when Europe had a surplus of vocations. They had more priests and religious than they could than they needed, and so they would send them overseas to mission ter territory, which is what Hawaii was. And so uh, Brother Damien uh, ends up going to Hawaii. He's there, I think, for nine years. And during that time, he is ordained a priest. And then that's when all this happened. The leper colony was created. Um, you know, the government was suppo supposed to be supplying aid and, and, and means to these, these poor lepers. But of course, it was insufficient, right, as, as it always is. Um, uh, and so uh, 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 Father uh, Damien, um, uh, volunteers to go there to that colony and assist the poor lepers. And um, he, he comes there, upon his arrival, he, f he finds the colony is very poorly maintained. And, and, you know, there's some government workers there, and there's government aid, and they're supposed to be building roads and, 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 and so on. And that's not happening. Nothing's happening. These poor lepers were, were taken there, and it was like, well, you know, they can have this land, and they can grow their own food and kind of have their own society. But there was no leadership. There was no structure, uh, and and so and so Father Damien, this this poor you know somewhat ignorant peasant from Belgium, he becomes basically like the mayor, the governor, the headmaster, uh, you know everything. Uh, so he, he he takes you know these government funds that are available, this this government you know assistance that's supposed to be being used, and he uses it properly. He oversees building roads, schools, hospitals, orphanages. People were dying. They have leprosy. They're not being taken care of, um, and so he organizes all of this. I mean, his efforts are really really absolutely incredible, um, and I think originally he had the option to leave. He, he, he was going to be. He was going to switch out with somebody else, but he refused and said, "I, I want to stay here with these people." Right? He, he grew to love them, and so uh, there he worked for the rest of his life, which was only going to be a short uh, sixteen years that he worked in that colony. Uh, he himself contracted leprosy, and he he only found out because um, I think it was um, the bath water was was too hot. It was this scalding water, and he went to get in, and his foot started to blister, and he couldn't feel anything couldn't feel any, uh, any pain. And that was typically, typically the way you would find out you had leprosy is you would get a, a deep wound, a cut that should have been painful, and you didn't even know it, because uh, that's what leprosy does. It deadens the nerves. And so from that moment, he knew that, that um, it was, there was no, no choice any longer. You know, he would never be able to leave, but you know, that didn't matter. He'd already made his choice. He wanted to be there with God's people, with God's children. And uh, towards the end of his life, I think it was his, his last year, he knew that his end was coming and, and leprosy, you know, as you get, you know, more and more advanced, um, you can lose fingers and, and digits and toes and so on, and you get very uh, tired. Um, he exhausted himself in that last year of his life knowing that he only had so much time, and so he worked harder than ever. And everybody saw this. Everybody saw that he didn't have to do this. He volunteered to go there. He wanted to be there among them. And, you know, he loved, he loved them, right? He, he loved these, these, these lepers that everybody else, I mean, we have that term, like, you know, uh, that, that person is a leper, or, uh, you know, treat, treat this person, you know, like, it's like I have leprosy, what's wrong with me, right? Nobody wants to be around them, they're outcast by everybody, and yet here was somebody who wasn't related, didn't know them, wasn't from Hawaii, wasn't even from that part of the world, he was on the other side of, 
of the world, and he came all the way over there and gave his life for people he didn't even know, right? That's, that's, that's martyrdom, right? That, that is giving your life to Christ. That is giving your life for Christ. And, and in a certain sense, that's being Christ. That is what Christ did. He, he left, you know, heaven, his homeland, and he traveled it, you know, metaphorically speaking, a great distance to earth, right? An, infinitely, an infinite distance to be among us, to give his life for us, um, but he didn't have to. And, and, and so that is what St. Damien of Malachi did. He would end up dying, I think, in the year um, uh, 1889. April 15th, 1889 uh, is when he died there on the island of Hawaii. And this was at a time when, um, you know, ele electronic or electricity was making the telegram and, and, and so on widely available. And so his story was, was, was um, one of the first that the whole world was able to hear about as an amazing story of somebody who gave his life for others. Um, and who was it? It was a Catholic priest, right? Uh, you know, and, and that's what you always hear. That's why the church has the reputation that she does, because the whole world sees people like this. Um, the whole world sees um, these men and women, and, and what do they see? They don't see Damien of Malachi. What the world sees is they see a, another Christ, somebody giving his life entirely for people, as I said, that he didn't, he didn't even know, and he didn't have to do this. And so that's the kind of, that's the, the, that's the white martyrdom, right, uh, that, that, that the church talks about when, when, when men and women, and you don't have to be a priest or religious, uh, you, you can be a parent or, or a, a secular in the world, but you give your life to Christ every single day, and it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's to, to work, to be among your family, to suffer the loss of a loved one, to, 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 um, to give your life for other people, to sacrifice, right? That, that, that's, that's what sanctifies, is, is, is doing the will of God no matter what it is. Um, so, you know, and, that, and that, that is something we all can imitate. There's always something in the saints that we can do, and it's not gonna be their penances, it's not gonna be their preaching, it's not gonna be their, their uh, incredible hours in prayer. You know, we, we can't imitate that. It's not gonna be their, their amazing fasting ability. Uh, physically, we can't do that. Mentally, we don't have the capacity. But what can we do in our will, in our decisions, we can always decide, I'm going to do what God asks me to do. Everybody has that ability, and that's what we're supposed to imitate from the saints above everything else. And, and, and the one thing, what, what does God want us to do? He wants us to love him, and he wants us to love others on his account because he loves them. That's what St. Damien of Malachi did. That's what uh, today's martyrs did. They loved Christ above all, and then everything else flowed from there. Uh, and that's how the saints, right? That's more of, of, of it's the love of God first, and then from that love of God, that's that what follows is the incredible penances, the long hours in prayer, you know, the, this, this incredible thing or that or whatever. The love of God is first and everything else is second, however that comes out. All right, so, so and, and if we get caught up, we get caught up in the externals because you can't see love. You can't see the love. You don't, you don't see it. You don't see that fire burning in their heart. That's why God allows the saints to do these incredible things because that's not possible. How is this or that saint able to accomplish this incredible feat? It's because uh, of the love of Christ in their hearts. That's how, and God wants that to be seen. So don't get caught up on the outside or, or just, just what's visible. Look past it and say, that's how much they love Christ. And it's shown in, in this or that activity of the saint. So what's it going to be for us, right? How, how much do we love Christ? Uh, um, that's going to be shown in our life. And primarily, how much are we willing to sacrifice in the little bitty daily things that God asks of us every single day? Make this sacrifice. Endure this hardship. Don't lose your temper. Be patient with others. That's God's will first and foremost. Let's do that. And then who knows, you know, what, what amazing things might follow. Uh, so God bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.